All right, the Philadelphia Eagles are set to take off against the Miami Dolphins at home, which should happen in a couple hours for you. But I'm just squeezing in another video and just going behind enemy lines and analyzing that Dolphins team to see where we can attack and how we should defend, amongst other things. And who's the top enemy? What's up? It's your boy Centron coming back at you with another analysis video. And I kid you not, that's a real name. So first up, Eagles Dolphins game preview, five questions and answers with this week seven enemy. So an opponent perspective on Philadelphia's upcoming home matchup. Let's get into their heads a little bit and see how they like to operate. So the question number one, the Dolphins are crazy good on offense. Who or what is the biggest reason for the success? And I would say, you know, it's the head coach, Mike McDaniels, you know, him um, putting them in positions to really be successful out there on offense. Tua Tago Vailoa, first time I've been able to say that successfully. So for me, anyways, um, fifth overall pick. And yeah, he's playing confident right now, playing like MVP. And he's just a trigger man out there. Um, he's like a souped up Drew Brees, you know, with that team around him and the weapons he has at his disposal. Um, front runner right now, yeah, I think he has 14 TDs and then five picks. Um, he's only had a um, couple bad games, only a handful of sacks, six and um, four coming in one matchup against the uh, Miami Bill, I mean, Miami Bills, sorry, the <laughs> Buffalo Bills. Can we get to him? I don't know because he pulls the trick with, you know, um, within 2.37 seconds. The fastest get off pause in the league um, where Jalen Hurts, you know, opposed to him. He's at 3.06, I think the third or second slowest time. Um, not maybe trusting what he's seen, but I don't think he was the fastest trigger man last year either. But I know he's slowed down in that regard this year. Um, but yeah, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Raheem Mostert. Devin A chain when he was out there. Durham Smythe, who we'll get to a little bit later, who's you know developing to the all round tight end, blocking and passing it, you know, threat. So um they haven't even added uh, Chase Claypool into the equation. I don't think that would actually mix very well, but we'll see. And they still have like, you know, guys like Robbie Chosen on the roster who, you know, can, you know, um, attack downfield and give you a, a sprinkle of um speed when they choose to rely on his, because you know, those guys are like a four by four relay and one of their members is out and Devin A chain on the injury reserve right now. Still has 38 um, carries for 425 yards and a 12 point, what, six? Um, anyways, a 12 point, uh, three or five or six, whatever yards per carry average. And he's not even playing right now. Um, <coughs> it's just crazy. Back, Braxton Barrios is developing to a solid possession re receiver. So they have it all there. Um, stopping them getting to the spot will be the things that thing that the Eagles really try to do, um, which is where Tua will be throwing it. But um, I have a lot of reasons, but um yeah man they, they've they just they're playing a different speed this year it's crazy that Tyreek says here he was going off more athleticism and um you know just that spurred a moment <laughs> um instead of you know uh really knowing what they're doing this year so there's a lot of reasons um and, and then their, their o-line isn't the best um but they get it out of out of there so quick that they're able to um mitigate having a, a porous o-line so gotta give you credit to mcdaniels and uh he's implemented the running game a lot more um than he did last year kind of eschewing it but you know just um they've been the the fastest team on uh surf on turf basically um yeah they, they operate at warp speed but that is a key to them uh to you know being a spark for the team the um the running game as well and, you know, they, they want to get you by um, making you come in and then hitting you over the top. We'll get to that a little bit later as well. Vic Vangio, number two, might have been the Eagles defensive coordinator had the Cardinals not tamper with Jonathan Gannon, which is, I mean, I don't know. I Actually, I feel like this, this side might actually be the better, um, you know, the, the, the student becomes a teacher because he's very good at adapting. And I'm not saying Vic is not as well, but you look at them in their first years and um, the defense isn't playing as well as, you know, people would have thought. Um, they were switching from a, a man to man blitz heavy, you know, to the zone scheme, um, that he's known for. They don't have a true nose tackle, Raquan Davis. You know, he's a good guy, but you know, he's not a zero. He's a one or a three. Christian Wilkins, you know, very, very good as well. But, um, I, I believe they're more maximizing him than they are, you know, Raquan. But I think, just think that's due to the scheme and the personnel they have, um, Jalen Ramsey's not out there, but they don't have the, really the pieces yet to really truly run the system that Vangio wants to run. So they're still kind of work in progress, and we you know we can still we can hit them 
Um, and they've also had pieces out, you know, one key piece that, you know, was a spark last year, I think his rookie year, um, but who, who's just coming back from injury, but he might look to get going in this game. Hopefully not. Um, number three, if you were Nick Sirianni, how would you go about attacking the Dolphins on offense and defense? Um, yeah, they've struggled against running quarterbacks. Jalen is that. He's him. So use him, uh, especially on the edges of that defense, to uh, convert third and down, third down, like in the Rams game, just broke their freaking back, third and four, third and nine, third and eight, third and nine. It was like four times, I think, you know, Jalen converted on third down, just they couldn't get off the fucking field. And running the ball down their throats. That's what I, yeah, running it right at them, right at the teeth of that defense. Um, they've struggled to uh, stop the run this year. So, um, yeah, going making it a pass play like we did last week plays right into their hands. So, like, it, I get that we weren't doing the best. And, you know, going back, looking at the film, um, there's one YouTube coordinator, I mean, the coordinator, um, YouTuber that broke it down excellently. We were just weren't having success in our with our bread and butter plays. We were, you know, doing more trickeration on, uh, like, funky formations, like the pony formation, two running backs in the backfield, and uh, kind of outside, you know, outside um, formations. But that being said, like, we have to um, to be able to do it in our our, our regular uh, formations, or you know, it's, it'll be off or not. Impose our will on the, on the defenses. And think about the Rams game, the Bucks game. Uh, we were able to do that, just that, and you know, make them quit, make them submit. And by the you know fourth quarter, they looked like they had lost the will to fight a bit. So hopefully, we can impose ourselves on that Miami um, defense. And um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really. I'll really be focusing on seeing how much, you know, we start, you know, and if we are able to um, to be consistent and staying and sticking with having the faith and going with the run game. Um, but, yeah, their strength is that pass rush. And because uh, they, they don't have the, the pieces on the back end there. Xavier, uh, Xavier Howard might not even uh, finish this game. He, he's going to start. He's questionable. I believe he'll be out there. But, you know, will he hold up? Like I said, Jen Ramsey's out. But I hope it also we don't get, our eyes don't get big and like, oh, you know, we can pass on Eli Apple and all the other replacement guys. We still got to pay credence to the run. Now, I think with Lane being in there, if he's healthy, if he's able to be effective, and you know, which I think he will um, be maybe about 80%, which is better than most, if not all tackles in the league, especially at right tackle, um, it'll make all the world a difference. Because having two backups in there versus having only one guy in there, um, that that is a replacement guy uh, replacing our right guard, Cam Jurgens, who's out right now on injury reserve would make a huge difference. So we'll see how that goes. Um, on defense, yeah, creating pressure with four. So um, clock in the middle. And I'm not sure because our linebackers aren't the best in coverage. You know, this will be interesting if we could employ that strategy, have them really dropping to spots and uh, clogging those passing lanes. But yeah, mudding up the picture, giving a different post-snap picture than pre-snap would be great because we haven't been so good at, at doing that, disguising coverages. Um, if we could step it up this week. And I know that we're working on, you know, with a uh, shorthand with uh, all the pieces that are out in the secondary. We've had 15, already 15 different players starting the secondary, which is, you know, just too shy of a record. You know, we might have that. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes because, you know, our, both of our safeties are backups. Guy, rookie, he's making his first start and going up against this offense. It's a big ask. And uh, if we look at, you know, to be in disarray out there, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, we do have Bradbury and Slay out there on the corners, so we might go with um, Brad, Bradbury in the slot, shift Joe outside. You know, he can, he's okay to, you know, like, he has his bad moments, but, you know, he's been okay. So um, we can have an okay guy in the slot and then have an okay guy outside, but that's more continuity con continuity than we've had all year. So that's the conundrum that, you know, Sean Desai has put in right now. And I don't know where you go with that because, I'm not a D coordinator. Um, but, yeah, like I said, Jalen Phillips, he's coming back um, pretty soon. I mean, no, he, he's coming back in, in, in this matchup. Um, but, yeah, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but, yeah, they have to, you know, attack that that, um, that middle of the field and, you know, those spots, so checking those edges and stretching us wide, pause. But um, they want to bring the safeties up, then they can try to hit us over the top. But, you know, staying in those passing lanes, clogging them up, and then just the line as well. I haven't seen them do this a lot of times, batting down a lot of balls, getting their hands up. You know, we're all about getting there with the pass rush, but 
sometimes just as effective knocking the ball down. And that's actually something that the Jets were adept at doing last week when we tried to use the, I hate this, but use the passing game as a, you know, a replacement for the run game, those short passing plays in the West Coast offense. You can't, you got to run the ball because um, people run out, run out of bounds, keeping the clock and stopping the clock and stopping us from keeping it, you know, shaving off time off the clock, helping us because we, we led, up, you know, through four quarters up until the last, you know, waning minutes, moments, you know, um, and still had a fighting chance after that. But, um, yeah, shrink those passing windows. I don't think he's the tallest guy uh, Tua is. So getting in, in, in the way and, and knocking him down, like the Jets were doing that, and it, it was killing plays. And, you know, it's just as almost, like it's not as bad as a sack because, it, you know, resets back to the line of scrimmage. But, you know, deading a play like that, it just takes all the wind out of your sails and momentum from you when you're, you know, driving and then, you know, ball gets knocked down and just, you know, dead play, basically. All right, can the, you name number four, an unsung player on offense and defense for Eagles fans to watch out for? So all-rounder, a tight end, we, we don't cover tight ends the best. We'll see how N'Kobe Dean does in that effort. We're going to most likely uptick his snaps this game, so um, he'll be rotated out less. But we'll see, man, um, boss, um, how that goes. But um, he's clearing the way for other guys, so he's like a decoy player distraction side eye you know it's not side eye <laughs> side uh, eye candy for um guys but you know let's not forget he can catch the ball as well so we'll see i have to monitor that but a replacement um back for a chain as well savan ahmed they believe he's as good as a chain but yeah that, that clearly ain't true um but he had a solid camp he has yet to come on so just does he come on here pause yeah po big pause and now on defense andrew van ginkle you know is getting after the passer See how, the, how he does in that run out at him. See how he, you know, he fares in the run game as well as Jaden Phillips, like I said, coming back. Um, it's increased snap count, so they're getting him more um, more ready, you know, to play a bigger role going to, you know, going to the middle to later stages of the year. Um, Kyder Coho, see how he does I and mean, if he's able to hold up because he might be playing a big role depending on um, if Xavier is able to finish the game, like I said earlier. And then Eli Apple, he's been down, more down than bad more down than good. Sorry, he's been down bad. But anyways, number five, who wins this game and why? So he's going to pick the Dolphins. Um, he believes they're just going to score points, and, you know, it's going to be a one-score game, 34 to 28. Um, I'm obviously going to pick the Eagles. Um, I don't know the score, but I'd say it's not going to be, like, I would be surprised if it's a 10-score game. It might, you know, be, I'd say seven points or less. It'll be decided by that. Um, hopefully by the Eagles, but I believe on either side. Um, cause I don't think, I don't think, I think there's going to be adjustments made on both sides to deal with both offenses and defenses. Um, and we'll see which, who makes the better adjustments and which is the better one first half versus second half. And if anybody has to play catch up. So, I mean, there could be a lot of factors going to this, you know, game, a lot of storylines already. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean the bills, yeah, they know the dolphins. So, um, that's why they're able to play them, you know, so well, but. Uh, we'll, we'll see how, how it goes. And, uh, yeah, both offenses looking to prove that they're the best in the league. They're, they're number two by yards. You know, they have Philadelphia, who's number two by a good 100 yards. And the difference between them and us is the same as us and like, the number 32 team. That's just crazy. Um, but, you know, a lot of that is tilted because of that Broncos game, which they scored 70 points. It just was a deep, it was a defensive meltdown and offensive destruction um, from the Dolphins to the freaking Broncos who got bucked. <laughs> um, that, I mean, this might be a Super Bowl preview, but we're not worried about this. One game at a time. I hope we come out here and win this one, but um, we shall see. I, I think it's going to be a damn good matchup and a damn good game, so um, I'll be tuning in soon, live streaming it. We're going to get to uh, one more thing here. So, Eagles opposing player to stop. Of course it's Tyreek Hill. Let's be honest here. This guy runs a 4-2-7, um, short, stocky build, so um, he's able to blow the top off of the defense and get on top of you in a hurry. Pause. But um, he opens the doors for everyone else to excel in the offense. And um, he's more well-versed. They're in the second year. He knows the offense better um, th you know, than he did this time of year. So, I mean, he's not the biggest. But, I mean, they can try and come up and press him, but he hasn't been impressed with that so far. And, like, most guys, you know, whiff or they just get beat. Dante Jack Jackson last week, he runs a 4-3-2. He blew past him like he was nothing and went to the end zone dancing on his grave. I mean, the guy is 
damn near unstoppable. We'll see if we can slow him down, but I mean, he's just so freaking explosive. Um, but yeah, can we force him into, you know, making mistakes uh, with, with the coverage that we, we, we throw his way? Might throw, uh, you know, three, four different looks at him. We need to make sure that he doesn't score on us. We can uh, have the 20s, but lock him down in the red zone. We shall see. But, man, he's a very dangerous player. So we'll finish up the video here. But anyways, man, I can't wait to watch this game. It'll happen in a little bit. Just be patient. But you're not even watching, though. It's all good because I love making these videos and I love talking about the Eagles. So hopefully we you know, celebrate that fly, Eagles fly at the end of the day. But I'm going to do that. Let me get up out of here. So, peace. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.